Hello everyone. Happy Alien Day. It is Alien Day 2023. We have another live stream for you. And already we have some folks heading into the chat, which is great. Um, if you've been with the channel for long enough, you know it's kind of a low-key kind of thing. Nothing too elaborate on these streams, but I think it is important to to share the alien love on Alien Day, which is what it's all about. We're all fans. We all love the series. We all love all things alien. And I want to wish you a happy Alien Day. And it's good to be back. Good to be back on the channel. Maybe a little rusty, but... Uh, I think uh, we have some things to talk about today on the chat for Alien Day, April 26th, April being the fourth month, 04, 26 being the 26th day, 0426, LV426 would be the reasoning, the rationale behind that, in case anyone's curious. Actually, it's kind of funny. Uh, we saw on social media we <laughs> for... Uh, you know, the last couple of years, 2016, I believe, is when it kind of officially started. And people let him know. And now he's kind of into it. And he's into it. We see that, of course, Carrie Han is into it. I saw many, many tweets today from Gail Ann Hurd, of course, the director, uh, um, um, the producer of Aliens, I should say. And a very interesting thing, which is probably what we should talk about at the, at the top of. I, I think I dis it said it disconnected. I hope we're, we're still we're still on. Um, no, AVP Blazer was not your uh, Wi-Fi. I think it might have been mine. Uh, but hopefully the stream uh, is still still going. And uh, as we can see here, uh, Fede Alvarez uh, for for the uh, the new Alien movie. He posted a little tease for us for Happy Alien Day see the clapboard and face hugger holding it and what possibly is the set for the new alien film but it could just be something general kind of like a general uh, background it could be manufactured in some kind of way whether or not we'll see that in the actual movie we don't know but bear in mind it is filming right now uh, it started filming last month I believe and it, it probably won't be too long till we start seeing a little bit more I, I know some people were kind of anxious today to see maybe there'll be possibly like a teaser or something like that uh, for, for the new Alien movie, but no, not not so much, not today. Just, just this little tiny, tiny tease here, which is good enough, I think. Uh, wet our beaks just a little bit, just a little bit, but there's a, there's a lot to look forward to uh, for the new Alien film, and I'm actually even hearing uh, some rumors, uh, nothing confirmed just yet, but you see on a lot of these uh, science fiction, uh, Alien-dedicated news sites, uh, that the very strong rumor <laughs> at this point is that it's going to be one word, sentences, it's going to be Uh, going to theaters, basically. So, uh, I think kind of in, in this post-COVID world we are at right now, or at least we're at the social end to the uh, pandemic, uh, movies are, are getting a little more confident in theatrical releases. And it's, it's beneficial no matter what. And we've seen that. We've seen that with a lot of recent releases actually and one example is that speaking of Fede Alvarez uh, you may recall that uh, a new Evil Dead movie has come out Evil Dead Rise uh, which isn't uh, a Fede Alvarez film but it's within the same continuity same kind of style as his 2013 Evil Dead film uh, that was released just over the weekend and it was planning on getting a release simply on streaming direct to streaming but the early word of it was hey this is this is a good project that we have we should release this theatrically and that's exactly what they did and it, it ended up being a huge hit already i think it's made you know 50 60 million dollars something like that uh it's done very very well 
um, for 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 any type of movie, not just a genre film. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more confidence in in these theatrical releases. So Prey may have missed the the boat, may miss the opportunity on that. Uh, but I think the new Alien film, we're, we're going to see a theatrical release. If, if, if only limited, uh, we, we are going to see it. That's the rumor at this point. But again, nothing has been confirmed. But that would be something I'd very much like. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's a theatrical experience. I, I love going to the movies. It's, it's a great uh, shared experience. You know, we're all sitting there in the dark. We're all... Uh, seeing the same events, seeing all these in incredible images, especially if it's something like it's a uh, you know, Ridley Scott film, which always looks beautiful. Uh, he's producing the new film, of course, and the sound design. Oh, he's great hearing that kind of low hum of, of the spaceship and, you know, the intricacies of, of the musical scores. Like, not too long ago, sometime in, in December, uh, I went to see... Uh, Aliens on the big screen, which was great. I'd, I'd seen it before uh, on the big screen, but I always kind of listen to the James Horner score. That's what I score. So I, I really love to pay attention to the, those little details uh, that you just can't quite get. You can get a, you can have the best uh, system in the world, the best television, the biggest television, 4K surround sound system, but it's just not going to beat the theatrical experience just by way of its, its practical elements not to mention you know kind of the, the social elements of it the the uh the feeling you get i, I guess uh, the, the magical movie feeling what can i say so we can all hope for that uh we can all hope that we see something very special uh with this fede alvarez film and i'm, I'm confident i mean prey definitely was a step in the right direction with the predator franchise uh it, it was mostly well received a few people didn't like it uh, but mostly well received Many would argue it's possibly the second best of the Predator films. So this one, kind of hoping for. I'm hoping for something that can rival Alien and Aliens. I mean, I know those are high hopes, right? But uh, you gotta hope. Though again, I'm I'm a huge fan of of Alien Three, and uh, another topic I uh, might want to bring up here, of course, of course, I, I spoke about this yesterday actually in a video. Uh, we have the new novel coming out, Bishop, Alien's Bishop. Now, this is going to be a direct sequel to Alien 3. So we're actually going to get a continuation of the story, which is which is very, very interesting. Uh, because, again, as I mentioned in the video, uh, it, it seems, I don't know, they're, they're a little uh, tentative in, in, in acknowledging Alien 3 as, as, as this canon kind of story. Uh, they won't outright say that it's part of the universe, but there's more of a, I don't know, a, a vague uh, understanding that it could be part of it, it could not. You can kind of make your own choice if you really, really want to, but here it is kind of more firmly established. So, uh, a sequel to Alien 3 where Michael Bishop... Of course, uh, the character we see at the end of Alien 3, who tries to convince Ripley to come along with him, come along with the company, and and have the alien removed. Uh, and, of course, failed in that. And, and of course, uh, as, as it said in the uh, Wayland Utani report, is one of the biggest personal failures of his life. He died regretting it and things like that. But we have a whole chunk in between that we don't know about. And what this novel is going to explore is, is directly after the events of Alien 3, uh, retrieving the uh, Bishop model uh, that was kind of discarded. I, I mean, I guess if, if unless something else happened kind of in between the scenes, say, where Ripley is... Uh, to, Bishop, and then later to uh, Superintendent Andrews. Uh, Bishop was just kind of stuck there. <laughs> it, was, it was ripe for the picking. Uh, so he wanted to be shut down. But as, as the synopsis says, Michael Bishop has other plans. So what can I say? Uh, that's going to be something where we're going to have to keep an eye on with, with this, this upcoming novel. I'm very excited for it. Uh, another thing I, I kind of mentioned was that in addition, in addition to this very interesting story where we have Michael Bishop, we have uh, the actual Bishop 
robot, android, artificial person, as you might say, from, from aliens, uh, you know, completely torn apart and ruined. Um, we have a new character. I'm, I'm hearing there's some buffering, unfortunately, so that's, that's a little too bad. I'm sorry about that. Wish there was something I could do, um, but... Hopefully it's it's working okay for you. But we have a new character. We have uh, a Marcel Apone, who is the brother of you know the Al Matthews character, uh, Sergeant Apone from from Aliens. So we're doing that thing again where we have a a relative of a character and they're included and and they have some relation to the alien as well. It's a little hard to grasp, but again, my philosophy would be that if if it's done well enough, it is forgivable um it, it's something that if handled properly i think we can accept it because i mean it, it really if, if you would have told me because i don't even really remember much of the lead up to it uh it, it kind of came almost out of nowhere to me uh alien isolation um if you would have told me hey we're doing this amanda ripley story it's ripley's daughter she encounters an alien i say ah, that's a little silly but then it turns out to be uh, one of the best stories, one of the best uh, alien video games, one of the best video games in general, I, I'd say, um, and one of the best characters in the series. Uh, so, you know, never, never doubt too harshly, but uh, a lesser extent and a more recent example would be Aliens Vasquez, which I thought was well done. I mean, we, we got a little bit of a prequel story uh, to, to the Vasquez character, Jeanette Vasquez, and we had this this whole other section. The main bulk of the story were her children, and following them, and, and of course they have their own and, and all that kind of stuff, uh, which was which was good. I mean, I I felt they handled it just well enough that I, it, it was effective enough that you could believe it. Yeah, yeah, we can see that there are these new characters in, in this alien world, and they actually also kind of included a. Uh, a Utani character as well, so kind of an interesting kind of like lineage continuation of, of, of the well-known names from the Alien series. Uh, so not bad, not bad at all. And of course in the comics we had Vasquez's uh, sister as well. Uh, so Marcel Apone. Marcel Apone is going to be the new character we see the the newly indoctr indoctrinated member of the uh alien relatives club uh which should be fun just waiting for like hudson's twin brother or something like that you know jimmy hudson something <laughs> should be fun to see i don't know could always use a little hudson i wouldn't mind a hudson story actually a hudson origin story how about that or hudson somehow survived he he, he, he got out of the alien's grasp under the flooring and he escaped. He found this transport ship and he just hauled ass out of LV-426. That's my idea. That's, that's copyrighted, though. Nobody, nobody take that. We're, we're in talks to do that idea. Survival of Hudson. I've seen worse. But yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody for uh, coming in. Aquanet, one, two, three, always good to see ya. Jimmy Hudson for the win. Uh, so that's what we look forward to in books. Not, not really. That was, you know, my little joke. But the the Bishop book is very much real. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, another book that I kind of <laughs> Edward Hinton says I want to see Dylan's grandma in the next movie. That'd be fun. She could be pretty intense. She's probably, you know, one of those snake handlers. You know what I mean? Um, uh, just released earlier in this week, actually. It's uh, H.R. Giger, Debbie Harry Metamorphosis. Now, I don't know if you've heard about, about this one. It kind of uh, quiets all these pictures when Debbie Harry was working with H.R. Giger and, and creating this character, uh, Cuckoo. Creating the visual concept for Cuckoo. And it's uh, this Giger art uh, placed upon uh, this, this human canvas and this character. And uh, it's it's such an incredible journey. I've, I've been looking at the book, and it's it's quite good. Um, definitely something I would say 
I should probably go into it in further detail. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do like a review in a video uh, upcoming. But I think it's great. Like the Titan always kind of comes out with these great kind of coffee table type of books. You know what I mean? Uh, for alien fans, where in, in this case it's kind of something that. Uh, you can have it out on the coffee table, you can proclaim your love for Alien, but in, in a slightly less obvious way, which is kind of cool, uh, because it's definitely a good conversation starter uh, kind of book, right? Like, where, you know, someone's like, look, what's this? You know, oh, you know, Alien, the, the artist who created the Alien uh, for the movie Alien. He worked with Debbie Harry of Blondie, and they created this whole, uh, this whole uh, project, this whole art piece, this whole world of, of, of this character. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting thing. Um, I've, I've been very much uh, enjoying looking through it. Uh, actually, <laughs> this is funny. I, I caught some video here if you want to take a look at it. My, my nephew uh, grabbed the book from, any, from me and he started uh, reading it. So th this is uh, him uh, taking a look at the book here. He's having a good old time reading through the book. So as you can see here, you know, some images of, of Debbie Harry and uh, the concepts uh, that, that Giger was working on, things like that. Uh, her movements, her dancing, as you can see. It's very interesting in the dancing photos. And that sarcophagus there. Um, that was a little, it's a little bit of my nephew there, uh, if, you, if you don't mind. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. I recommend checking it out. But um, yeah, that's something I might want to uh, go into further detail uh, with, 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 with another video. It's a really, really good release. They always come out with these great releases, uh, Titan, both in terms of novels and in terms of these these kind of larger i guess the only other way to kind of put it is like a coffee table uh kind of book uh larger kind of piece with with, with art and things like that of course you know they made uh the aliens anniversary art book where they commissioned all these artists to, to bring their own aliens art uh, for for the for the project and like things like the aliens cookbook, uh, which is another thing I should probably do for a video. I should try and make one of one of the uh, just at least one one of the recipes from the aliens cookbook and and do that for the channel. I think that might be kind of a fun little little project to do. Um, and you know, of course, all, all other types of releases, you know, from. Uh, you know, the making of aliens. Uh, J. W. Rinsler, who who always makes these incredible incredible. Uh, books. Uh, may, may he rest in peace. He was, he was a wonderful talent. He, he made uh, such great uh, accounts of, of the makings of, of these films. Truly kind of the definitive uh, resources on the making of, of those films. So very, very appreciative that those were able to be released. And of course, everything else under the sun alien related, you know, stuff like that. Um, but uh, it's, 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 it's the special Alien Day, so we are seeing stuff like that. Uh, maybe not as much as we would have seen uh, in, in the earlier days. Like, of course, the one thing that I was always looking forward to the, for the first couple of years were, were those uh, audio dramas. Those were always great. Uh, you know, Out of the Shadows, River of Pain, and Sea of Sorrows. And then, of course, you know, what was really, really cool was when they did uh, the, the alternate Alien 3. Uh, where, where they did the uh, adaptation of William Gibson's script, of course, and they had Michael Bean, Lance Henriksen, return. Uh, PJC 2.0 says, "You still playing Aliens Fireteam? Alien Theory? Why? Why? Yes, I am. There. That's a that's a good segue, I think. Uh, so another piece of news that maybe I wanted to talk about here. I've prepared here. Uh, is that uh, Aliens Fireteam Elite? It it has been actually released on the Nintendo Switch." How cool is that? Finally, after after uh, more than a year, actually, uh, it's it's released on the Nintendo Switch. Well, that's the Switch. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's one of my things to that I love to do. I love to kind of just chill out, watch TV or something, play my little Switch. That's always a fun. Ah, I always thought kind of you know, Aliens Fire Team Elite was the ideal kind of game for that you know you don't really have to pay. It's, not, it's not like a plot heavy game there are definitely plot elements but you can just kind of mow down uh aliens and jay says is alien theory is live i've never clicked a video so quickly thank you very much jay appreciate it um one of my favorite things to do uh play 
play the Switch. And now we finally have it on Switch. I did actually play around a little bit earlier today, and it it works well. I mean, it's it's definitely a little choppy, uh, which, I mean, I guess you can kind of expect day one. Or maybe it is my Wi-Fi. I've heard some people in the chat kind of say there's some lagging, some buffering, so I don't know. But uh, hopefully it's something that they can fix. It's it's actually kind of an interesting thing. It's It's not like, say... Well, I mean, I'm not too much of a gamer to really kind of compare it to anything else, but uh, a horrible example was something like, say, Fortnite. Fortnite? Fortnite, uh, which you, you download this game, and it's like a huge download, right? So I guess it's like, it's, it's all already kind of inside uh, the programming of the game. I don't know. But here's the thing about Aliens Fireteam Elite. When you download it on the Switch, the actual download... It's very tiny. Uh, it's it's sixty something megabytes, which I thought this has got to be a mistake, right? In, in the pre-order, because I, I did pre-order it, hoping to get some bonuses or something like that. Uh, but but no, it was ready to play. What they do, they kind of load the game through some uh, cloud technology where everything kind of loads right there, which I think could kind of contribute to some, maybe some of the lag uh, that you're getting. Which, you know, hopefully they'll improve upon. But it's kind of interesting how, how, how they're doing it. But, uh, yeah, you definitely have to be connected to the Internet, of course, uh, for, for this particular game. But from what I played, it was fun. It was exactly as, as I remember it. And, uh, yeah, I, I recommend it. It's a fun game. Oh, uh, if someone uh, asking, uh, uh, Baron Von Haggis in the chat is asking, is it worth it, PC? Uh, I see a Steam sale. Yes, absolutely, it's worth it. And C. Garcia, FCU, says, love your content, bro. Thank, Glad to have you back. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for the chat. Um, good to be back. Still a little rusty. Still kind of getting into the swing of things, I guess. Um, you know, just, you know, adjusting to things. But uh, you'll see more. Uh, you'll see more of, of, of what I'm doing. Um, Aquanet says, hey, Alien Theory, what did you think of In Search of Tomorrow's interviews and such to the Aliens movies? Oh, wow, that was my favorite part of In Search of Tomorrow. That's why I'm so glad that they're doing um, Aliens Expanded, right? Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. And, and that was kind of another thing, you know, the, the, the timing of it, you know, things happening in, in life uh, uh, being, uh, you know, uh, on hiatus, let's say, uh, for a little bit, um, you know, uh, Robin Block, the, the producer, and, and Ian Nathan, the director, they did reach out to me, like, you know, we still we still want you for, for this thing, uh, buddy old pal, um, so we're going to try to make it work, so hopefully we're still going to uh, be able to arrange something so that I will uh, be a, a presence uh, in the documentaries, but it's still, still, still to come, so I'm very excited for that, very excited for that. Um, Yunners, which are you looking forward to, Romulus or the TV show? I, I gotta admit, I'm looking forward to, to Romulus more. Um, one Alien Day thing that I should mention, actually, is that uh, apparently AVP Galaxy and Byron Arvenitis says, Happy Alien Day, been waiting for this stream for a year. <laughs> Thank you, Byron. Uh, hopefully it's worth it. Um, but one thing I won't show is, is actually what I'm talking about, uh... Uh, AVP Galaxy, they, they got a, a hold of uh, some co uh, new concept art uh, for the television show uh, that's going to be uh, airing on FX, uh, which apparently is spoilery. Uh, so I, I am aware of it, but I actually haven't I haven't taken it because I'm a little wary of spoilers. But um, uh, that's something that's that's come out for, for Alien Day. And, of course, we have a lot of great stuff. I mean, if you go on social media, you'll, you'll see uh, this is an incredible celebration of Alien. And... Lots of people, especially people who are dedicated, like you have the AP, AVP Galaxy, uh, you have uh, the Perfect Organism podcast, you know, who, who, who's always kind of fully fledged alien dedication is, you know, an, an inspiration. Um, and, and Perfect Organism, I shared it on, on the uh, community. Um, Alex Holtz uh, shared a huge, huge super chat with me. Thank you very much, Alex. Great to celebrate Alien Day with you all. 
great to celebrate with you, Alex. Thank you so very much. Really appreciate it. And I, I appreciate you all being here. I mean, celebrating Alien, Alien Day. And uh, definitely worth checking out uh, the short film uh, that Perfect Organism uh, released. Transmission, Alien Transmission, I believe it's called. Very well done. Recommend it. Uh, Leon Ferlin says feet is getting lost. Yes, sir. I don't know what's going on. I did get kind of in, in between uh, everything. The I, I got uh, this kind of new spiffy desktop computer setup, which I don't think is quite what it could be. I guess I don't know. I'm not sure. But this is kind of a new setup that we're doing. So maybe there's still some uh, bugs, so to speak, to uh, you know tinker with things like that. Um, but hopefully we're doing okay. Hopefully it's not lagging too much. And, uh, yeah, we, we're seeing quite a, quite a few things for, for Alien Day. And uh, personally, what I'd like to see, I, I would like to see more of the audio dramas. You know, I'm really getting kind of withdraw, I guess, uh, from not seeing them, right? Oh, we have a French comment here. La vie chez les marines, c'est comme des vacances à la ferme. Choc repère une bagouille. Choc fin de moi. On est billionaires. Ah, see, he's doing Marcel Apone. Get it? Um, but that's uh, Apone's line from the film, but in French. Every meal's a banquet, every paycheck a fortune. Every formation of parade. I love the core. CMDR Verms says, Happy Alien Day. Last year I decided Brett's outfit was a good cure for my orbit outlook and dress code. Black. You're, you're, out, you're right on. Uh, I think that is a great look. I think kind of, you know, the casual Hawaiian style never goes out of style. You know? That's great. Adnan Kabir says, Man, my feet are freezing. What do you want me to do? Get your slippers for you? Okay, yeah, now I am actually seeing a, a little bit of a notification that every now and again I'm, I'm seeing some buffering, so I, I do apologize for that. Um, again, maybe I could do something, but I don't quite know what. The other says, the only way I'd be cool with a David Flashback or anything in Romulus is if they reveal that he didn't create them but created his own version and we can move on from what Scott tried to do. Well, that was sort of the concept behind uh, Alien Advent, the short film that was included in, in the bonus material for Alien Covenant. That was kind of the suggestion there. Though, I mean, kind of in the undercurrent, it's always been the suggestion, I guess, sort of, unless you ask Ridley Scott. That's the only person who seems to disagree with everything, um, contrary to his own movie. But uh, I, I, have a, I have a sneaking suspicion that though Scott is... Uh, producing the film uh, he's not going to include elements of Alien Covenant and, and, and Prometheus at least not too strongly uh, in, in the new film I, I think they'll want this to kind of stand on its own uh, at least not at least not let's say direct plots or direct character references I guess um, maybe just uh, kind of worldly elements to it, possibly. I can't say for sure, but we'll, we'll see soon enough. I, again, I think very, very soon we're, we're going to see something. Leon Ferlin says we love the channel even with the buffering, Derek. It stopped now. It's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, it seems to be it seems to be in and out a little bit. I don't know. Jack Johnston says, watched Alien for the millionth time, but for the first time with my 13-year-old brother, watching it through his eyes. It really takes its time. I love it, but for this generation, <laughs> but for this generation, I can see it being slow. Uh, well, I guess my question to you, Jack, would be if uh, if you watched the theatrical version or the director's cut, because the director's cut very kind of subliminally uh, moves at a little bit of a faster pace. So I think that would be, I, I mean, I would recommend that for, for a, a younger audience. Um, just because there's, you know, slight, slight cuts here and there. Slight changes in scenes. Slight pacing differences. 
uh, where if you were to, it would be an interesting experience actually, to kind of just put theatrical director's cut side by side on a screen, see how they kind of go, uh, and see exactly where the cuts are. Because even I, like as, as someone who's done, you know the whole analysis of director's cuts and special editions and stuff like that and all the minutia of the alien films uh, even I couldn't tell you exactly what was cut where and what was cut when basically for between alien the theatrical version and alien the director's cut which is always you know I, I think that would be an interesting experiment to make um, murder after asks would you ever work for Wayland Yutani, A.T.? No, I don't think I would. Uh, Naramine says, What if Romulus were a battle between an engineer and a deacon, both alone on a planet? I'm in. Uh, I mean, I, I would hope it'd be a little bit more, <laughs> more to it than that, to be honest. Uh, the Horror Cat Dad says, Saw Alien 3 in the theater back in the day and loved it. Once I came across the assembly cut, I loved it even more. That's great to hear. That's great to hear. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I've always loved Alien 3, and uh, the assembly cut just kind of extended it. Terror, Terror Dome 3000, who I see on Twitter quite a bit. Thank you very much for the chat, the super chat. I says, he says, uh, I bet Ridley was planning to have David bio, bioengineer the SJ, space jockey, as, as a living joke. A middle finger to mortal gods, in quotes, which created humans. Plus morph all those humans to the eggs in Alien. Happy Alien Day. Now there's a thought. There's an interesting level. I think that's kind of cool. Sven for the win says, Hey AT, if I got a jacket for Nostromo or Sulaco, which do you think is coolest? I kind of feel Nostromo is a little bit cooler. Nostromo is a little bit more niche. But I happen to have, you know, t-shirts of both. But I actually don't have a Fury Fury 161 shirt or jacket. I think actually the coolest might be a Fury 161 jacket, to be honest with you. I remember seeing, like, and I think I posted on Twitter or something like that. There's an ad in one of the Alien magazine or Aliens magazines, you know, from back in the 90s when they had all those, uh, uh, you know, dedicated Aliens magazines that didn't, you know, kind of the uh, continued uh, stories of uh, the comics, you know, in a serialized kind of way. Uh, and lots of ads for alien stuff. I remember a big ad for, like, Alien 3 bomber jackets, which is kind of cool. I'd like to get one of those. Maybe on eBay somewhere they have that. Though, actually, I think I saw somewhere, maybe it was on eBay, uh, maybe it was on, on one of those uh, film auction sites, uh, they do actually <laughs> have uh, some, some piece of uh, wardrobe from Alien 3. That could be interesting. Nikki D says, I got a Zeno snail and a coffee table book of all the ships in the Alien movies. Best birthday ever. Well, if it was your birthday, happy birthday today. Or if it was... The audio has cut off, says Chris's bedroom movie reviews. Hopefully that's only for you. See, I don't know what's going on with the stream. I feel bad. Um, but I'm in too deep now, don't you think? Uh... Merlin's Ghost says, Do you think alien stories have become a bit formulaic? Do you think they need to write a coherent story that finally ends the saga company or something? Can the series keep going as is? Uh, formulaic in one sense, because, I mean, Alien Covenant, when you think about it, it's, you know, it's the same old thing. It's like this uh, crew of a ship goes to a, a planet that they shouldn't be going to, and then, you know, something terrible happens. <laughs> Uh, so, in, in that sense, yes, but, I mean, in other senses, they do really wildly original things, um, and, you know, peek at, at certain philosophies and concepts that you wouldn't necessarily see in a type of movie like that, so it's, Alien Covenant in particular, it's, it's, it's a very, you know, uh, it, it contrasts itself, it, it's, it's, I'll still stand by that it's a good movie, I know, I'll, now, not everybody loves it. It's not universally acclaimed like some of the other films, um, but it's it's just so damn interesting. Uh, there, there's a lot that they kind of tap into with the movie uh, that that I find I find compelling. Brian Williams says, says good on audio. That's good. I'm glad to hear. Qui Gon 
Tim, the random raptor says, which was your favorite f- favorite alien movie? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'll give the stock answer that I always give. It's, it's kind of a battle between alien and aliens, but if you twist my arm, it's alien. Ridley Scott's original film. Lampy's Human Leather Lampshade says... <laughs> that was a tongue twister. Lampy's Human Leather Lampshade says, Audio does dip in and out of reception. Damn, it's too bad. It was, it's like I'm playing Aliens Fireteam Elite all over again. Drame says, Hey, T, what is your opinion on the worst part of all the Alien films? What made you say, really? Uh, pick a moment from Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. I mean, pick any moment from that film. Oscar Gonzalez says, have you planned any collaboration with another channel like Project Acheron? Uh, nothing nothing sol- solidly planned, uh, but there's always kind of talks. Uh, a lot of times it's just kind of a matter of uh, getting schedules together. And of course, you know, in, in recent weeks and months, uh, you know, I'm in kind of radio silence a little bit. Just not, not in it, so I mean... I don't know. Uh, but Austin Wilcutt says, Do you own any of the Alien films on Laserdisc currently? Yes, I own the first two on Laserdisc. Um, I know there's actually a couple different versions. I couldn't tell you exactly which versions. Well, although, you know, specifically the Laser- Laserdisc of Aliens is a special edition of Aliens. Um, but I know there's quite a few different types of releases. Um, but I do. I do have... <laughs> I don't have a Laserdisc player. Brown Human says, are you excited for the new Aliens game coming out? Uh, Dark Descent? Yeah. Um, uh, apparently there's a new trailer. I haven't watched it yet. Uh, but you can pre-order it now, which is kind of cool. Uh, I think it's only 40 bucks. Not so bad. Uh, again, it's kind of the thing. I, I've mentioned this you know, in the, in the announcement video. that It's another thing that I wish would have just, uh, I don't know, just come right to Switch. Nintendo Switch. Well, that's the Switch. Yeah, exactly. Um, and... It's not, at least not uh, immediately. Though they might do a thing, you know, a year or two from now, they'll they'll port it onto the Switch, and it'll be very uh, glitchy <laughs> and chop up in the audio, much like this stream. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm excited for the game. I, I mean, it's going to be interesting because I'm not too good at those types of games, but I'm not too good with a lot of types of games, so I'll I'll, I'll have to. Uh, I'll have to practice a little bit. Jacob Hughes says, I think I remember seeing AT streaming Fireteam. Yeah, I did a, did a couple of streams of Fireteam, for sure. Um, it was fun. It was fun to do. Sgarden91 says, which Alien movie score is your favorite? Ooh, that that's actually a really tough one, because they all have excellent scores. Every single one of them. Um, I mean, I'm definitely partial in a lot of ways to Elliot Goldenthal's score, um, but if I had to choose, uh, I'd probably say James Horner's score for Aliens. Nicholas Malgavero says, Hi, what is the name of the short alien film that you said was worth watching? Can it be checked on YouTube? Uh, yes, it can. Um, it's Alien Transmission, I believe is the name. And uh, if all else fails, uh, just uh, go to my channel, go to the community tab, and, and you'll see a link to it. Crocodile says, how did you feel when Alien Isolation was revealed, and did you play it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I played it pretty much first thing. Um, I remember, I actually, I didn't buy a physical copy. I, I downloaded it to my system, which, I mean, is pretty normal for today, but... Even back in, what was it, 2014 it came out? 2013, 2014? Um, maybe I didn't have the best internet. So I remember waiting all night for it to download. And yeah, I just thought it was amazing. Uh, I, I spent most of the time first playing it just kind of looking around. It was great. The other says, my niece is too young, but on her first birthday I got her The Alien Next Door by Joey Spioto and Jonesy, Nine Lives in the Strum. Yeah, those are great. <laughs> great books uh jonathan with uh with the with the the, the winning chat for today uh four dollars 26 cents four two six keep up the good work thank you very much jonathan i appreciate that happy four two six to you 
Appreciate it. Scrappy Deuce says, hello, I woke up at the right time. LOL. Oh yeah, and by the way, it was uh, Alien Isolation on the PS3 that I downloaded at the time. Now, of course, you know, you can get it uh, on, on every single console. Imagine, they've milked that game for all it's worth. You can get PS3, Xbox 360, Xbox One S, Xbox whatever, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Steam, PC, what have you, what have you. Uh, Nintendo Switch, they have it on the Switch too. Uh... We need a sequel, don't we? I mean, beating a dead horse and, you know, saying what I've been saying for years now, but come on, we need a sequel. New Name says, hey, first time I've been able to catch a live. Love your videos, and for a while I would sleep to your stuff. <laughs> Might explain the dreams. Yeah, if you're uh, dreaming of, you know, face huggers or some horrible dream about smothering people for, for any of that. Joyless Tiger says, thank you. It was just too dark. Not thematically, just literally too dark. Filmed dimly. Nasty Boots says, what are your thoughts on the new a Alien Marvel comics? I actually really enjoy the relatively fresh stories. Uh, not bad. Not bad. I'm liking some of them. Though there's this whole thing that's going on right now, which I'm very angry about. I'm very frustrated about. Um... I like to think of myself as kind of a digital guy, and I have been keeping up with the comics digitally, and the only way you can get them digitally is either through the Marvel app or Comixology. Used to be able to, I could purchase an Aliens comic strictly through iTunes, because that's what I use. I, I use Apple. That's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a bitch for Apple, what can I tell you? Um, that's what I used to do, and I still have my collection, even though you can't purchase them anymore. Of course, you know, it's your purchase, you're entitled to them. But anyway, the Marvel Comics app has now uh, announced that they will be closing and fusing with the Marvel Unlimited app, and now you have to go through some weird process to uh, link your account and transfer your library of Marvel app purchases into the Marvel Unlimited app, and it's been a nightmare, and I've talked to, com uh, to customer support, and I'm not getting anywhere, and it's just been frustrating, and, you know, there's a, there's a tick in the box for maybe digital is not exactly what <laughs> we wish it could be just yet, um, but that's been a frustrating aspect. But aside from that, I, I mean, decent, decent comics. I, I mean, uh, I, I have been catching up as slowly. I, I, I'm not all up to date, to be honest with you, but... Um, the, the stories have been interesting. Um, the art is kind of hit or miss. You see the tracing and stuff like that. But you can only complain about that so much. Um, really what you want is, is, is the stories. And I think they've, they've delivered on that quite nicely. Dante Kenshi says, Did you ever play Alien vs. Predator Extinction? Actually, no. That was like the one ABP game I never played. Um, I played the original PC games. Uh, I played the, the 2010 Alien vs. Predator, but Extinction never uh, never crossed my path, actually. I never had a PS2. I think that's, uh, I think that's something that just never came my way. I don't know why. Round Human says, Have you ever played Alien and Aliens board game? Uh, I, I own the game, but I haven't played it. Uh, it's it's hard for me to get started. Once I can get started, I think uh, we'll be okay. But I, I mean, I'm assuming you don't mean the uh, 1970s board game. I'm assuming you mean more of the the recent games, the uh, Alien: Fate of the Nostromo uh, game uh, for for Alien, which is pretty cool looking like I, i've you know i've opened the box up and looked at everything and read the rules i'm like okay i think i could do this if i really wanted to and looked at all that i don't know i think it would be kind of cool to uh do like a run through of the board games like a first impression of the board i'm seeing kind of in in uh real time so to speak but just as i'm learning it Mr. Gatorblitz says, where can I find this background ambience and the other one you use in your video? Um, this is all through, well, except for the Nostromo sounds, which, you know, obviously they're from Alien. Um, these are all in 
the YouTube music library. Everything I use in every video is from YouTube music library. I don't want any, you know, pleasant surprises or unexpected surprises when it comes to copyright strikes. So it's all their music. This one, I think it's just called ambient background, something that to that effect, but it's all in, in the YouTube creator library. Badger Den says, oh damn, I missed the scream from the beginning. Stream from the beginning. Life got in the way of me enjoying Alien Day 2023. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, I'm still here. We're still streaming. We're still having fun. Everybody having fun? Having a good Alien Day? I hope so. Hellbound Heart says, do you think Sigourney Weaver will return to the Alien Cinematic Universe in some capacity? I really hope so. Uh, I really hope so, too. Um, it's hard to say. They might end up doing something that's just a very small kind of cameo role. You know? Maybe not something too involved. I can't say for sure. But I would hope so. I really would. Josh LV426 says, Hey Derek, just seen Aliens at the Cinema! Seeing it on the big screen for the first time was an amazing experience. Well, I'm very happy that you got that experience. And Hey You says in a super chat, Thanks for the great content just arrived. What did they do special for Alien Day this year? Oh, well, they didn't do anything too magnificent. Maybe like the biggest thing of the day actually was, you know, it's kind of, you know, small potatoes. But uh, here, I'll pull it up once again for anybody who might have uh, missed it. Um... Fede Alvarez, director of the new Alien film, shared this little uh, little peek at the new Alien film. This uh, clapboard uh, for for the film, a little face hugger holding it. So, this we can assume is the set of of the new Alien film. So just a little sneak peek. Just a little sneak peek, which is enticing. I mean, it would have been great to get a trailer, right? But or a teaser, something like that. But. In good time, in good time. Whoops, I fucked up the stream. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that. Whoa, watch out, Ripley. And, uh, yeah, just uh, other stuff. And, and Christopher Brian Harris says, Hey, I've been a long-time subscriber and a fan of you since you explained Special Order 937. I'm a composer that has in some way made a reference to the Alien original score. That's that's great. That's, that's one of the, the best scores Jerry Goldsmith has ever done. Which I know, I mean, there was some... I don't know, controversy over that. Like, he didn't really like what they did with his score, and he got kind of angry about certain changes they made, certain decisions he made. But it is one of the best scores. I mean, it's it's up there. Well, I mean, as much as I love the score, maybe The Omen is more, more famous. Uh, the more well-known score. I mean, The Omen is one of the few scores that if you hear it... Uh, you know exactly what it is, right? Or even if you don't hear it, you know exactly what it is. It's like the Jaws music, right? Um, it's just instantly recognizable, which is a hard thing to do for a composer. There's there's very few, you know, scores that, you know, aside from, like, pretty much anything that John Williams does, uh, that you hear it and you immediately you know what it is or, or what feelings it's, it's trying to evoke, right? So... Auto Tomatoes says, Resurrection is a campy horror comedy. It's a fun romp, but not a good alien movie. I think that's fair. I think that's fair enough. Esgard91 says, As much as I love his score for Alien, I think Chinatown is Goldsmith's best. Chinatown is also a very great score. Very great score. Christopher Byam Harris says, oh, hands down, his best score. You should check out the episode in the Orville where the main characters are, are on board a Krill vessel. They reference the hell out of the original score. Oh, I'll, I'll have to check that out. I haven't seen too much of the Orville. I've seen a little bit of it. Ben Polaster says, could we talk about an Alien Isolation 2, please? Where you play as Rebecca Newt and experience her story until the Marines arrive. I would love that game so much. That would, I mean, that would definitely be a cool game. I mean, and in the colony, doing the same kind of hide and seek kind of stuff, right? 
Austin Wilkett says, which cut of Alien 4 do you like best, theatrical or special edition? I prefer theatrical. Um, if only because I, I, I'm not crazy about that kind of opening shot, which is, is a good, you know, ambitious kind of effect for the movie, but... Mm, mm, mm. Scabby Samons has been here since you got your first subscribers, if I remember correctly, and I am really glad I found you. Greatly enjoy your work. It is always uplifting to learn something. And I'm sick of Alien. No, I love it so much. I and mean, I just love always finding something new, new out about it. Hey you, says uh, Super Chat. Do you think we'll ever get an Alien vs. Predator with no humans? If so, what are your hopes for story beats? I don't think so. I don't think we would. I think we need the humans. I think we need some kind of human anchor to the story. Uh, say like it's an animated thing. Which there were rumors of that an Alien vs. Predator anime series exists and was made for Netflix but never saw the light of day after the Disney acquisition. I don't know. But I do feel like it's it's just, you know, as interesting as it would be for a fan, I think that the, the gut instinct for any kind of producer, uh, anybody, say, not exactly in the creative control but in, in in the marketing control of things would say hey we need a human to guide the story we need some kind of anchor for the audience so that they can uh, relate to it somehow Merlin's ghost says alien vs predator movie no humans and no dialogue could be amazing I mean it could be but they'd have to they'd have to have the cojones to do it that's the thing Aquanet says, anyways, theory, I gotta go play some D&D, &D, so hopefully see you later. Stay frosty and stay strong. Thank you very much, Aquanet. One, two, three. Thank you. Ben Polster says, by the way, love your work, man. Thank you very much, Ben. Oh, wait, uh, if we could do an Alien Isolation 2 with Newt, you would also see everything out of a child's perspective and see how the colony gets taken down by the hive as you play with the hide-and-seek. They could do that, or, you know, kind of like they did with Isolation. I mean, Sevastopol wasn't really Nostromo, but it all kind of felt Nostromo-ish. So, I mean, they could do a colony very similar to Hadley's Hope, have a new original character, even have it include, you know, Amanda Ripley once again, um, doing that kind of thing, the hide-and-seek thing, as the colony kind of goes awry. Uh, they could get away with that, I think. Dean Leslie says, I just got up after seeing Aliens Special Edition. Love this channel. Thanks for the accounts of the Earth Wars video. Videos, my personal favorites. Thank you very much, Dean. And I'm very happy for you to have seen Aliens Special Edition on the big screen. It's, it's an amazing experience. I've actually never seen Aliens Special Edition on the big screen. I've seen the theatrical twice, but it never seemed to play the Special Edition. What's up with that? Land Monitor LSD says, I watched Alien and Aliens with my son in the last two months. He can't wait to see Alien 3. I have to have a talk with him about managing expectations. Oh, boy. It's cyclical, isn't it? It's like reliving. <laughs> it's reliving the whole thing over again. What happens to Hicks and Newt, Dad? Oh, I don't know. Let's have a talk, son. We might have to give him a beer for that one. Yeah, at least. At least. But no, that's that's kind of the thing. I mean, some movie series, I'd say, you know, you can, like, pop them all out one at a time, back-to-back, -back, things like that. Um, certainly Alien and Aliens, I think, works very well because there is kind of this, you know, echoing of the stories, this kind of thematic visual continuity between them so they do feel like one big experience the two sides of, of a coin uh alien 3 is just so different in tone that you know kind of dips down in kind of the momentum that that aliens rises up so much so if you watch alien 3 immediately after aliens uh it's jarring and you know some people can't recover from that so I, I think ultimately the film is stronger uh, watch you know a little bit after you know wait some time don't don't do like a straight-out marathon is, is what I would say but if you can't help it of course I mean 
Hopefully it's not a first time watch. Chemlock says, 17 days? Hey man, I don't want to rain on your parade, but we're not going to last 17 hours. Those things are going to come in here just like they did before, and they're going to come in here, and they're going to... Okay. Uh, Aliens is impossible to follow, says Landmonitor. I mean, yeah, it really is. But again, I still kind of have hope that, you know, you would think... I mean, come on. Predator. Predator is one of the best action movies of all time. It's a perfect movie, great action, great one-liners, great special effects. It's just pure, perfect entertainment. And that just can't be topped. Even Predator 2 had tried to replicate that a little bit, kind of doing a different thing with its genre, trying to do the the, the police thriller genre in kind of replacement of, of, you know, the commando action genre meets Alien Hunter kind of thing. And it did a great job, but it was no, no, nowhere near, near as good. Uh, needless to say, neither was The Predator, uh, the Shane Black film. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Prey came pretty close. Prey kind of gave it a whole new life, took the concept, made it its own, uh, serviced it in a way that wasn't too obviously doing callbacks. Like, even when they do come to the line of, if it bleeds, we can kill it, it felt justified. It felt kind of within its own story, you know? Uh, it, it didn't feel like a cheap callback the predator where they they see the choppers you know the cycles in, in in the distance and they're like get to the choppers and you beat yourself repeatedly in the head uh after hearing that line um or another one was remember in uh, terminator salvation where john connor uh christian bale was like oh i'm gonna go out and do this thing i'm gonna save the guy whatever his wife says what should i tell them He's like, tell them i'll be back you know it's like come on Stupid. Uh, Jonathan Piconi says, seen a Michael Bean interview where he was asked his favorite movie he performed in, and his reply was Aliens. Then he got a little choked up. I think... Is his heart missing Bill Paxton? Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we all miss Bill Paxton, but... We, the thing, I mean, we miss him as fans. I mean, to be actually someone in his life, you know, someone who was a friend, a collaborator... Uh, I can't imagine what that would have been like to to be in that type of a relationship uh, and, and lose him. I mean, by all accounts, he was just like a wonderful person in addition to being a wonderful entertainer that we all love, right? So that still hurts. So, I mean, if, if it hurts this much, much from a fan's perspective, uh, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um... Metro Gaming 14 says, Hey, Alien Theory, wasn't there something about James Cameron making another movie, making another Aliens movie after Aliens 3 came out? I heard a rumor about that, too. Like, I think someone asked him at some red carpet thing for, I don't know what it was, an Avatar re-release or something like that. And he said, oh, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. And that was nearly three or four years ago now. So, I mean, take to heart James Cameron's projects as as much as you will Quentin Tarantino's projects. I'm still waiting for uh, uh, that uh, that that other uh, movie with the Michael Madsen and John Travolta. Gene Simmons says, Good to see you back in action. Thank you, Gene Simmons. I, I love Kiss. It's fantastic. I'm sure you hear that all the time. That's stupid of me. But thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see what James Cameron do, does. Uh, as far as I know, he doesn't have any involvement in, in uh, Romulus. Only Ridley Scott there, but, uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, Brian Dodge Caravan says, Amazing to see you back. Hope you and yours are doing as well as you can be. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's um, been been a rough uh, couple of months. Um, for those who don't know, there, there was a, a death in the family. Uh, my sister died of uh, cancer, and it's it's been terrible. Uh, it's been a horrible nightmare uh, that I, I uh, you know, I, I constantly wish to, to wake up from. Um, but, you know, I needed to take some time off, needed to, uh, you know, process things. Uh, but, I mean, the thing is, this, doing the, the Alien Theory channel, the Alien Theory videos, it, it just brings me so much joy um, that I, I don't want to... Uh, you know, leave that on the back burner uh, too long. 
because uh, I over, already have felt that it's been a little too long, and you know, to deprive to deprive myself of, of, of something that brings me happiness is is just uh, you know, it's 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 putting salt on the wound, I would say. Um, but you know, I, I feel at, at least I, I took the time to process, um, you know and just get things clear in my head but it's 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 been hard it continues to be hard um but that's that's really all, all i want to say except you know um just uh you know take care of yourself take care of your health uh check up on yourself you know and and never take your loved ones for granted um and love them unconditionally and that's and that's all i i can uh, say about that so I, I do have uh, lots in the works. Uh, there's stuff I've been working on, and and stuff I want to kind of get uh, completed. Uh, but one of them I'm I'm already kind of thinking it, it's going to end up being like a several hours long video. So that might be a while before you see it. But I have other ones that, you know, they're, they're close to being done, but I just need to, you know, do, do the audio on them. But, you know, here and there. So it's kind of more of like, I don't know, slowly but surely easing into it. So maybe there'll be some stretches where you don't see videos. Maybe you'll see quite a bit. Um, my most recent video, actually, is, you know, a little five-minute video news piece about, about the Bishop uh, novel coming out. And for some reason, it was flagged for community guidelines violations i have no idea why it said it was uh inappropriate <laughs> I, I don't know what the problem was which is a little piece of news about a bishop uh, book but um yeah I, I appealed it and the appeal was uh denied so it's it's an age-restricted video i have no idea uh, i have no idea is youtube just it's it's run by robots worse worse than david uh, or artificial people, I should say. Uh, so, I don't know. Ho hopefully that's like an isolated thing, because, I mean, some things, you know, here and there, it'll happen. Especially when they kind of first introduced the whole element of the guidelines, violations, kind of penalization. Uh, you would see a lot more of it. Uh, but then they kind of trusted uploaders to do their own reviews of themselves before the video is officially uploaded uh, so I used to see it a lot more but I'll still see it here and there I'll, I'll get a little flag but um, if, if this becomes a trend I'll probably be in trouble um, so keep those those super chats coming no I'm just kidding um, but uh, no uh, I would fig I would imagine that if it's happening to me, I'm, I'm not the only one it's happening to. So we'll we'll see what the kind of climate of that is soon enough. But I I'm, I'm willing to bet that it was an isolated in incident. I would say. We have some people in the chat very offended by me calling <laughs> David a robot. I'm sorry. I guess artificial person. That's the term they prefer. Got to be PC these days. Got to watch out. Don't want to offend all little toaster ovens out there. Robert Gaming 14 says, Hey, Alien Theory, did you ever check out the What If Drake Lives in Aliens video? Honestly, you can check it out. It's very good. No, I haven't checked that out. Uh, you know, that's something I've been... I, I have pondered myself. Um, it would be interesting to hear someone else's perspective. Peter Estrada says, yes, several hours run. Yes, please, a thousand times. Yes, Marathon Podcast, got motion, comic readings, whatever you want to do, young fella. Uh, well, geez, I don't know if it's going to be a hugely... I don't think it's going to last too much longer, to be honest with you. Uh, Alex Chung says, favorite Kenner Aliens toy. I'm kind of partial to the Gorilla Alien. Uh, that was the one I played with most as, the kid, as a kid. Um, one, I like that it had the little... You could... 
you could press the you know uh, protuberances in, in the back and it would move the arms and it'd come in and out and grab and stuff and also you could fill its head with like water and stuff right and it would spit out acid I thought that was very cool permafrost 77 so those things crawling around you can count me out yeah I guess we can just count you out of everything then Austin Wilkins his favorite kill in Alien 3. Mine is the fan. That's a good question. Ah, uh, maybe Clemens. That was a pretty shocking one. I, I like that. And Jude was pretty good, too. Like, if you look closely, like, you see, like, half of his body does kind of make it. Uh, the other half, not so much. Robert Gaming Forge says, uh, who was your favorite Marine in Aliens? Um, that's a tough call. That's a tough call between Hicks and Hudson, I would say. And I don't, uh, I don't know if I want to choose... I think they both appeal to certain senses of my nature. I mean, in a lot of ways, we all wish we could be a Hicks, calm, cool, collected, uh, you know, reliable when the chips are down. But in, in, in very, very real ways, uh, I think we can all relate to Hudson, too. He's just freaking out at everything and sees, sees a, a dire situation when it's right in front of you. So it's hard to say. I think Hicks and Hudson are the angel and devil on my shoulder a lot of times. But yes, absolutely, Vasquez is awesome, too. Uh, the Pale King's his favorite NECA alien. Well, that's hard to say, actually. Um, I, I was pretty impressed with uh, the dog alien uh, that they did. Um, you know, you, you see the big chap a lot. I mean, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I'll, I'll go with big chap. My, my glow-in-the-dark big chap is my favorite. Dan St. Fernando says, your thought... Well, here's something. Maybe someone can help me out with this. Um, I had heard, like, in an interview somewhere... See, I don't know if this is just a memory now, if I actually did read it somewhere, um, that uh, for, for that final scene, um, Sigourney Weaver... Uh, I mean, I guess the most delicate way to put it, her pubic hair was sticking out, and they had to airbrush it out. And it cost a lot of money to do. So I don't know if that's a rumor or if it's actually true. Uh, I, I, I can't recall where I read that. Um, but it's... I, I don't know. So th those are my thoughts on, on Ripley's Bush. Kevin Knoll says, Alien 3 is very underrated. The chemistry and dialogue between Charles Dance and Sigourney Weaver is excellent. Yes, I agree with that. The underlining theme about heaven and hell as well. Good gothic horror. Absolutely. I mean... Hey, I'm 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 a huge supporter of Alien Three. Any positive word you can say about it, I I pretty much agree with. Neanderthal says I work at a cinema, only a year old, so it's gigantic and new. My boss is okay with having an Aliens night. Can't wait. Excellent. Very happy to hear that, Neanderthal. Mike Quarter Irish says, do you think Marvel will ever cross over Alien and Predator with the characters in comics? Well, they teased it with their kind of special edition, you know, alternate covers, variant covers. Um, so we can kind of already imagine what, what the concepts would look like, but uh, so far they haven't. Uh, but, I mean, it wouldn't be too out of the realm of possibility. We've seen what... Uh, Wildcats versus aliens in, in the DC days. Superman versus aliens. Batman versus aliens. Batman versus Predator. Superman versus aliens versus Batman versus Predator. Um, didn't Lobo fight them at some point? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but it would be cool. It would be cool to see. It doesn't have to be, you know, this incredibly, you know, written in stone canon. It could just be a fun one-off story. Let's see, uh, let's see Spider-Man fight an alien. That would be kind of cool. Robert Gaming 14 says, Hey, Alien Theory, I heard something about the Alien second movie getting 4K. Do you have any information on that? Uh, I believe John Lando, uh, producer of Aliens, and, well, you know, pretty much all of James Cameron's films, like Fox 2, uh, he pretty much confirmed it. Uh, on He doesn't have his own Twitter, but someone who had a 
uh, movie news related Twitter account asked him at some uh, release party for Avatar The Way of Water and he says it is coming it's soon that and I believe The Abyss as well or True Lies you know something to that effect but it's it's coming soon Austin Wilkett says is the Alien 4K worth double dipping on absolutely Kane of the Way says, I've always wondered why do you think Sigourney Weaver was so incredulous to the idea of Alien vs. Predator, as if Predator was a completely genre, different genre of movie. I always found it strange. I, I don't know how close she ever was to it, to be honest. Like, I mean, I know she said in an interview, like, oh, I heard they were doing Alien vs. Predator, which sounds ridiculous. That's, that's all I really, really remember her saying about it. Um, which, if she just found the concept ridiculous, or if someone actually, you know, approach her with something a little more you know with a little more meat than that uh i i don't know but um you know she wouldn't be alone really scott <laughs> doesn't seem to uh, be a big fan either of the concept or of the finished film so yeah different strokes different folks uh dervinator says aliens expanded update um while I have had, you know, a bit of a, a, a hiatus, um, I, I have been in talks um, with with the Aliens Expanded creators. So hopefully we're going to see something. Uh, Dutch Schaefer says, have you read River of Pain? If so, how was it? I just started today. River of Pain is excellent, I think. Um, you know, it's, it, it is not exactly the, the most original concept. Because we did see Newt's Tale. We saw the, you know, whole prequel to the Hadley's Hope incursion. Um, but the thing is, they add completely new stuff, but they don't step over anything uh, from Newt's Tale either. So they, they go with their own original plot, but what was established, so that there are certain things about the Hadley's Hope attack. Um, that are just irrefutable that are basically as fact that you cannot change uh and they stick to that which is great um you know where they hold up and and you know the actually i'm not sure i i know the audio drama takes actually no it's it's both uh because i remember having a, a bit of trouble with it when I, I made a a video that uh, did like the timeline um they had you know the dates and times of all kind of the significant events but uh the the novel version the christopher golden novel and the uh the audio drama they had slightly different times for each things but some were the same but for other things were so i kind of had to like look and kind of compromise a, a little bit but that's one cool thing i thought you know they had a complete kind of time frame between the two uh, uh releases release uh, versions uh, of it so absolutely it's it's great river of pain is great and they kind of well i don't want to spoil it for you since you said you're just reading it but they have set up something that they could if they really wanted to uh that they could pick up on they could pick up with uh for a future story uh Sola says uh did you watch fede alvarez alien day twit he <laughs> um <laughs> his tweet yes absolutely absolutely this one right here all right yes i'm very excited about that it's my favorite picture of the day uh it's it's the clapboard it's the date is 426 2023 they're filming right now it's beautiful groovy Doom says all three audio dramas are awesome i agree we need more um question is which one should they do because you know it used to be pretty soon after the book's release we we'd get the audio drama and now we've kind of built up this whole uh library of further alien stories we've, we've so many more and i don't know as, as much as i like stuff like uh the cold forge you know that's one, one of the big favorites amongst fans and into charybdis um i think what might be kind of cool is if they did an audio drama of uh phalanx uh because it's you know it's a one-off story not though it has connections it doesn't like depend on connections to other stories um it's it's a different it's kind of the the fantasy kind of uh, 
old timey <laughs> medieval quote. I'm doing air quotes so you can't drink your Um And it's it's unique, right? Uh, and and there's great characters in, in that story. Um, that I, I also listened to uh, Bronson Pinchot's reading of it. Uh, and, and he does such a great job creating those characters to bring life. I'd love to see them brought to life further in an audio drama form. I think that could work really, really well. Matthew Gregg says, Just back from seeing Aliens on the big screen. Still the best film ever, and so good seeing it on the big screen. Congratulations. We have, we have another viewer of Aliens on the big screen. You should take a shot every time you see that in chat. This is beautiful, man. I, I'm really happy to hear uh, so many people are seeing it today. I looked around, and, and I didn't see any uh, playing near me. Though, I mean, admittedly, I, I caught it in theaters of, you know, uh, December-ish. Uh, I saw it. Um... Robert Gaming 14 says, Alien Theory, do you have a time that you think Aliens 4K would come out this year or next year? Um, no, I don't. Unfortunately, uh, no specifications on that. Sebastian says, uh, Hi, I'm from the UK. Just come back from the cinema. Alien Part 1 screening. Excellent. See? See how much we love this series and this movie and these movies. I'll see it any time I get, or any any chance I get uh, to, to see Alien or Aliens on the big screen. Uh, I'd love to see Alien 3 on the big screen. That's still kind of a, um, you know, kind of a bucket list kind of thing uh, for me. I'd love to see that. I think it would bring it to a whole new dimension. And of course, back when, you know, they first came out, I saw... Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem on the big screen, but those barely count. And honestly, I would like to see Alien Resurrection on the big screen, too. That wouldn't be too bad. I mean, the thing is, it the, the state of movies these days, uh, they seem to take less risks, their effects are less convincing, uh, they kind of feel like these assembly line kind of things, so, you know, you, you almost become, you know... Uh, nostalgic for the, the kind of empty 90s movies which I mean I, I wouldn't even say Alien Resurrection was kind of this empty movie there, there were some interesting things to it some interesting themes that it played with that you know at least made an attempt to uh, elevate it above you know your, your average kind of say uh, deep rising creature feature kind of thing though deep rising is really cool um, but you know what I mean uh, so you almost want to harken back to those days. Space Jockey has a, has a super chat for me. Thank you very much, Space Jockey. He says, I was fortunate to see the first two movies first run. The magic of those movies has never been equaled. I doubt it ever will. Thanks for keeping the dream alive. Well, thank you, Space Jockey. That's an incredible accolade to have seen the first two movies in in, in the first run. Um, I mean, I, I I feel embarrassed that my first Alien movie that I saw in the theater it it was Alien vs Predator. Kind of sad, but yeah, you know, I don't regret it. It was fun to see. It was, it was a good time in my life. Summer two thousand four. It was a fun time seen that movie so it almost didn't matter if the movie wasn't that great and I think it's aged alright Auto Tomato says Deep Rising is great fun yeah see it's, it's a good movie it's decent uh, Mike Quarter Irish says Alien Resurrection was the first Alien movie I saw in the theater uh, second rated R movie I saw in the theater without sneaking in first one was Starship Troopers a few weeks earlier yeah Starship Troopers was good too that also had you know, a little bit more, a little bit more to it. Some satire, some some deeper themes to it. Akio says, "I saw Alien Resurrection twice in the theater when it was new. The only thing I didn't like was the birth scene at the end and the creature, just really gross looking and too much slime. Yeah, the newborn. Yeah, not not a lot of people think of that as you know one of the better uh, additions. Though I, I don't know, I think it's okay. But compared to." Something like the Neomorph. I thought the Neomorph was kind of a cool thing. Um, but I, the thing I like best about the newborn is you know, those beady little eyes. 
I thought those were cool. It's scary. Uh, Lakizi is Q. Try my best. Watched Aliens on my brother's VHS when I was probably seven or eight. I was way too young that I didn't even know what I was watching. LOL. Give me nightmares for years, though. Oh, yeah. That happens. This one, you know, it's a good movie when it gives you nightmares. Cyber Shaman X says, I saw Aliens in 70mm on opening day. The sound was awesome. Experiencing an audience respond in real time to what happens on the screen was great. I saw Predator in the same theater, too. That's awesome. I mean, you know, if, if, if you're, you know, a different generation of fan, let's say. Because, I mean, a lot of fans are kind of like the VHS generation, HBO generation, that's, uh, let's say, at least alien, uh, not within its theatrical run. Uh there's no experience quite like how it would have been to have seen Alien at that time, at that point in history. It, you know, it was a revelation. It, it shocked people. It was something different. It was something new. Uh, as good as it plays today, as great as it, sh it, as it you know, stands up, we'll just never quite have that feeling. Because so much has come after, uh, you know, so many imitators and things like that. Um, so that's, you know, that's a badge of honor to have been able to see it. Leon Furlan says, VHS rules. I agree. I love VHS. <laughs> I'm a tape head. Uh, Robert Gaming 14 says, hey, Alien Theory, just wanted to say thank you for all the videos. Really helped me through the tough times to just relax and watch Alien. So I appreciate that. I'm glad to have helped in, in any kind of way. I, I certainly know how, how tough times can get and uh, the solace that we seek and... Uh, it's important. Jason Argan says, face reveal when? Uh, I, I've revealed my face here and there. Um, way, way back, I mean, we did a, uh, an Alien Day kind of documentary where we all talked about, you know, our favorite Aliens moments, so I, I was in there. So it's, it's it's Alien Day 2017, I think, so you can look back there for a video. Sometimes on my Twitter, uh, Instagram, you can see my face there. So I just, you know, it's not a huge part of the whole thing, right? Uh, Mr. L says, I would love an alien, isol alien isolation too, set during the LV-426 colony outbreak before Ripley and the Marines arrive. New protagonist. They could do that. They could take a character actually from Alien River of Pain. Uh, they could do that and, and kind of work it into, or, you know, kind of like a similar Hadley soap kind of thing, like a similar concept that looks pretty much like it, feels kind of like it. Uh, I think it would work w incredible as, as a game. Uh, Riley Martin says, my dad snuck me in to see Alien because he couldn't get a babysitter. I hated him for years after. Hey, that's not bad. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how old you were. I'm guessing if you needed a babysitter, at least, I don't know. Let's say, I'm, I'm going to guess five. Let's say five. Um, maybe six. Let's say six. Five, six, seven. Somewhere around there. Um, hopefully you thank him today. Brown Human says, first time I saw Aliens, I snuck the rated R VHS from my mom and dad's room and popped it in and scared myself. Uh -huh. First time I saw Bishop get torn apart, I felt like throwing up like he did. Dyreth Wolf says, showed my kids Alien a few years back. The reaction to the chestburster scene was amazing. I think they still feel it's the scariest movie they have watched. They now refuse to watch anything Alien. Uh-huh think they want more. Lackey's esque How about that? I am an attorney and often work crazy late hours, but I love listening to you and watching Alien Theory videos on my second screen while working. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Uh, I appreciate you watching, and I'm, I'm glad to keep you company during those those late hours. I mean, I, I know how it can be. Um, sometimes it's, it's you know nice to immerse yourself in, in, in this world particularly the world of alien i mean it, it, the thing is it's 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 always kind of in our heads i mean if, if, if you're kind of a, a super fan right if, if, if you're someone who you know loves alien stuff uh which i assume if you're on this chat if you're on this channel if you're watching right now you are it's always just kind of on your mind you know something might remind you of alien you might think of a line or a moment from alien just randomly throughout the day you might think about something you know um so that's what it's all about. Trevor Williams. Gives me a super chat. Thank you very much, Trevor Williams. Big fan of your channel. Huge fan of Alien. 
Aliens, Dark Horse Comics. Not too keen on the other stuff, but enjoyed the Alien 40th Anniversary short films. Yeah, those were really good. I mean, I, I thought they did some good work with uh, kind of a, you know, just shoestring budget, right? Um, and it was, a, if I recall, it was like, kind of like this competition kind of thing um, where they choose the, the best ones, or at least choose the best uh, concepts and then, you know, provide them with... Uh, with the resources, with uh, the budgets to, to, to get them done. That is, is what I kind of remember. But no, they're still on YouTube. You can watch them. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, though I don't think they have them on the 4K Blu-ray disc, I know for sure if, say, you have a digital version of Alien, uh, like, you know, Apple Movies or Google Movies, things like that, um, they actually have updated their special spe special features, like say I use iTunes, they call it iTunes Extras. Uh, they have that updated, so you can watch um, the short films directly uh, through 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 the film special f features. Uh, Adam just writes twenty dollars. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much. Solus sixty three says, "Is my humble opinion the best thing Hollywood." could do is make movies based on awesome scripts slash outlines that take place in the aliens universe with completely original characters and locations is that a face hugger in your chest or are you just happy to see me uh, retro gaming 14 says hey alien theory what is your opinions on newt i never really liked her i feel she got vasquez killed by running off in the vents and also getting the alien on board and killing everyone it's a little harsh um no i love newt who doesn't love newt well, I guess there's a faction that, that doesn't care for her. I love Newt. Come on. Pink Chicken says, Nah, Cineworld up in Scotland. Place was packed. I was really surprised. Great to see such a turnout reaction to the movie. Such a good ride. Uh, Charlie Burns says, Do you play Scorn? Or will you play Scorn? Inspired by H.R. Giger. Uh, no, but I keep hearing about it. Uh, a lot of people are kind of interested in, in seeing what I have to say about it, so I will have to check it out eventually. I'll have to. Chimney366, thank you very much for your super chat. Thank you for all your content. Earth War, Trials of Machiko, and all the others have been good company working nights. Optimistic for Alien Stark Descent. Uh, I am. Though it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's the type of game that I don't usually play uh the the most similar thing that i've played in recent memory was red alert 2 which was back in what the 90s um so i'm i'm rusty on on that kind of stuff uh but i think once i learn it once i get the hang of it i think that'll be fine because i mean like a shooter like say you know aliens fire team elite you can pick up and do that no time no time at all right uh you can instinctively know how to play a shooter game but for kind of a more strategy based kind of top down adventure action kind of game it's 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 a little it, it requires a little bit more attention i guess which sometimes i don't know i have a, a bad attention span i'm just looking through the whole chat right now and I'm, i've completely gone off topic or if there even was a topic to begin with on this chat usually there's not anyway um as you know these chats they're very low-key they're very uh casual they're not like the videos where you know it's you know I, I stick to a script obviously here you can see my ums and ahs and breathe in breathe out things like that and just kind of stammer a little bit but that's that's who i am that's me it's the casual conversation aspect of of the uh, stream uh nick welsh nick welch uh gives me a, a super chat celebrate this first super chat from nick welch love your channel and content i always enjoy watching alien theory videos late at night when the kids are in bed with the lights low to get that aliens vibe keep up the amazing work thank you very much nick i, I appreciate that and I see a theme here. Everyone watches me late at night when they're trying to sleep. I've heard people say, oh, you, your voice puts me to sleep. I guess as a compliment, should I try Alien Theory ASMR next? I don't know. Uh, 
M. Gabriel says, I love the trials of Michiko Noguchi, too. Thank you very much. Oh, there should be more of those along the way. Aganar81 says, Aliens for the win. Thank you, Aganar. Super chat. I appreciate it. Pink Chicken says, Alien Theory vids are good chill out vids. I guess so. Lo fi Alien Theory to sleep study too. I guess. Trevor Williams says Alien Isolation is one of my fave video games ever. Yeah, I mean it's one of the best. Thank you very much, Trevor. I appreciate the uh, super chat. And uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, even people who aren't really like you know specifically Alien fans kind of admit that. Scrappy Deuce says AT trust me, it's a good thing. Keep people engaged enough to block out the real world and help people relax. That's good then. I, I that's that's all I can hope for. Hey, Alien Theory, what are your favorite non-alien movies by Scott Cameron and Fincher? That's a good question, S. Garden. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Scott, um, geez, he's done a lot of great movies. Um, I mean, one movie of, of his that I feel is very underrated is uh, Matchstick Men uh, with Nicolas Cage. I think that's just an excellent film. Uh, really entertaining, really funny. Um, I don't know, 100% of I'd say it's my favorite favorite of his i mean obviously alien is a favorite blade runner of course i mean that's like just an obvious answer gladiator i've never been like a huge huge fan of gladiator but i always you know i like gladiator generally um but yeah matchstick man I, i'd, I'd kind of put up there um quite uh, quite underrated in my opinion uh from cameron i mean next to aliens I mean, there's, there's great stuff. I mean, like, all of his movies are great. All, I mean, they're all favorites of mine. But, I mean, maybe I would actually have to say Titanic because, I mean, it's just such a, uh, a, a an incredible uh, achievement. You know, what a, what a movie. I mean, it, it feels like such a long time ago now. But that movie, like, that movie owned the world. James Cameron was king of the world when that movie came out. Uh, everybody knows Titanic, and it's, it's a great epic, uh, you know, a great and respectful account uh, of, of, of the terrible tragedy uh, that, that occurred. Um, just wonderful. And David Fincher, uh, Zodiac. Zodiac is an excellent film. Uh, one of the best from Jake Gyllenhaal, one of the best from Robert Downey Jr., Mark Ruffalo. Such an excellent cast. Uh, so great and atmospheric. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful movie. Uh, VCC, thank you for the super chat. Says, will we get Prometheus three? Fede movie thoughts. Um, Prometheus three? Mm, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. Uh, nothing suggests that. From from what I know, the the, the Fede movie is kind of where it's going to be, and my prediction is that it's it's not really going to be uh, any kind of relation to those movies. It's going to stand alone. It won't have any kind of continuity to Covenant or Prometheus. Um, that said, I mean, as someone who is an admirer of Prometheus and Covenant, um, I'm disappointed uh, that we won't get a continuation or you know, finale uh, of, of, of that entire storyline. But I'm, I'm also... Uh, I, I am curious to see what new stuff they can do. And, and Fede Alvarez, he's, he's a very talented director. I mean, he's, he's done great stuff with, you know... Uh, horror and thriller kind of stuff with you know the evil dead film uh and with uh don't breathe um also proved he can get a lot out of a tiny budget he did this short film that kind of paved the way for him to to direct evil dead uh called panic attacks all about this you know uh spaceship attack this this invader from a distant planet kind of attack uh, that looked like it was like a huge budget movie but he made it for you know pennies um so I, I have faith that he can uh, deliver both, you know, the, the tension kind of elements that, quite honestly, I've been craving uh, from an alien movie because we, we haven't really had something that's like really kind of edgier seat tension uh, in an alien movie just yet. Like Prometheus and Covenant, they had kind of these, you know, horrific images, this, this you know, scary, uh, intense kind of scenes, but nothing that like kind of like nothing like the first Alien. Nothing like aliens where you're kind of just, you're you're anticipating what's what's going to happen next, right? Uh, you feel really invested. You feel really 
uh, worried about the characters. You're, you're, you know, you're tense. Um, haven't seen anything quite like that uh, in a while from Alien. So I, I think uh, Fede Alvarez can do it. I really do. And, and I have faith in the film. Trevor Williams says... Uh, a new super chat. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, your your fave alien movie that is not Alien or Aliens. Pretty easy for me. The next in line is, is Alien 3. Absolutely. Alien 3. Uh, I, I love it. Mm. Close is Prometheus. Because I do love Prometheus too. Um, but Alien 3. Ramsey says, yeah, I have a feeling Fede might make the goriest alien movie yet, considering how metal the 2013 Evil Dead was, and I'm all for it. Yeah, you could definitely do that. And, uh, you know, I, I did see, I talked about it previously in, in, in the uh, stream, I, I did see uh, Evil Dead Rise recently, and I was kind of surprised that it wasn't as gory as, as the 2013 film, which, you know, it was, it was close, but I don't know. Fede knows what's up. Joseph Brosev says, have you gotten a chance to play the Alien RPG? Uh, no, I have the starter kit. I have the book. I have an expansion, but just not yet. Lakizi SQ. Now I think we're close. Uh, $30 Super Chat. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your work you're doing in, 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 in the late nights, working on law. Listen to, to your old pal Alien Theory. Thank you for everything. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming out today for the stream. M. Gabriel says, My 13-year-old niece is watching Alien for the first time. She's up to the chest burster. Well, she's not getting any sleep tonight. Though, I don't know. Maybe they'll say, Ah, it looks fake. Who knows? Kurt Erf says, Why are you not replying to any of my comments? I don't know, Kurt Erf. This is the first one I've seen. I'm sorry. I didn't, I am not intentionally doing it. But actually, I think when I was, like, ranting on about... I don't know, Matchstick Man, I was looking away from the screen. <laughs> just staring off into nothing, talking about Ridley Scott films. Stefan Thomas says, please live stream when you do Alien RPG. That might be something to do. I don't know. I feel like maybe I should at least uh, prepare and video it, but not live stream it. So at least I can like edit out parts where I'm embarrassing myself. Maybe. M. Gabriel says, Alien was my first R-rated movie when it came out, and I was 11 years old. It's been in the basement of my subconscious ever since. I think for a lot of us, it, it has been. Uh, it never really leaves you. But uh, whether that's Alien's first R-rated movie... Specifically. I, I, I can't really say for sure what my first R-rated movie I ever saw was. I don't know. Drawing a blank. David Wingrove says, Hi, AT. Thank you for all your videos. Happy Alien Day to you and all the Marines on here. Yes, Ura! Happy birthday, Marines. Happy birthday? <laughs> Happy Alien Day to everybody. PJC 2.0. I'm still laughing at myself. Happy birthday. PJC 2.0 says, Alien Theory. Have you played the Alien Blackout game app? It's a sequel to Alien Isolation. Yeah, I've, I've played it, and I mean, eh, it, was, it was okay, but I mean, it wasn't anything mind blowing. It was okay. A Spoon says, do a video of AI writing a script to an alien sequel. That could be kind of funny. Sometimes, you know, you see those script to a movie. Or an AI wrote a speech for so-and-so politician. They're kind of funny. EP says, alien theory, glad to see you back, brother. Other than that edge-of-your-seat feeling of the originals, what else do you think is missing from the new films? Ah, that's a good question. Well, I mean, there's a certain set of criteria that we always kind of expect from an alien movie. We, I mean... We do kind of expect the face hugger to attach to someone. We expect a chest burster to come out. We expect to see the element of a life cycle, even though, I mean, we've seen it so many times, but we expect to see it in a different way that surprises us. 
Uh, we expect to see the uh, alien in its full form, but we also kind of expect something new, which is why we got the Queen uh, with, with the sequel, and which is why we got kind of a variant with Alien 3, the, the quadrupedal alien, and which is why, well, with Alien Resurrection, we got the newborn, which didn't really pan out that great, um, and with, with Prometheus, we, we got completely different things. Uh, we didn't get an alien in its final form. We got, you know, uh, the, the the deacon alien, basically, and the neomorph uh, with alien covenant. So we see these variations of the creature. To see, maybe just stick to the original alien this time around. We've seen enough variants, I suppose, at least for this time around. And I'd like to see something, quite honestly, see if we can make a, a good suspenseful movie with just one alien. I want to see, I want to go back to that. Just at least once more before it's too late, before it can't possibly be done ever again. Uh, I'd like to see if that could be done. And of course, I mean, the, the standard things. You, you want good characters, but maybe more importantly, good actors. Because Alien isn't necessarily about great characters. I mean, it is and it isn't. Uh, it's, it's the actors that made the characters great. Uh, it's, it's their personalities that they brought to uh, that, that made them great. Uh, and, and kind of what Ridley Scott allowed uh, for these actors to do and, and to inhabit these roles. Uh, never once did you hear anything about their families back home or, or anything like that. Uh, it, it was just these purely inhabited characters uh, that, that we know, uh, that, that we can relate to. Uh, strictly through the the situation unfolding, uh, and, and that's a stronger response you'll get to any uh, any kind of oh let's see some pictures of your kids kind of thing, <laughs> like which I use as a, a trite example, but that's literally what we get in Alien vs Predator, so uh, stuff like that, and I'd like it to be visually pleasing as as it usually is, so that's always nice. Um, Charlie Burns says, would you ever do an audiobook drama? Um, maybe, uh, like, it would have to be, like, a, I mean, I guess, like, a unofficial fan fiction kind of thing. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'd be open to it, I guess. Cloudy Girl says, Happy Alien Day. Has any one of the Alien franchise movies ever made you cry? The newborn sucked through the hole made me cry, not gonna lie. Um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like maybe at the end of Aliens when Newt says, Mommy, it makes me... Maybe not outright cry, but eh, tear up a little bit. Tear up a little bit, come on. Not made of stone. The Stardust Conspiracy says, What are your thoughts on the original alien idea of intelligent alien civilization and the pyramid that was cut from the first script? Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Ron Cobb did all these... Or was it Ron Cobb? Yeah, it was Ron Cobb. He, he did all these you know, uh, conceptual pieces of, of the exterior and interior of the pyramid and i think we got a little bit of it um in the dark horse adaptation of the original script which i, I think that was like the last officially released dark horse aliens comic come to think of it um i thought that was interesting stuff um i do feel like maybe leaving that out left the derelict it's time to shine. The derelict's kind of more compelling to me than a pyramid. Um, so I, I wouldn't say, oh, man, they should have put that in. No, but I, I, I do find it interesting, and I think it kind of did work uh, in, you know, the context of, you know, this alternate story that we got in, in, in the uh, uh, Dark Horse comic of, of the original script, the original screenplay. Lucky's Esquire... How we doing? When we found out in Alien 3 that Newt died is the saddest part of the series, in my opinion. Well, yeah, that's sad, too, but, I mean... It's... It's just brought to you so coldly, too. It's not like the music swells up. Swells up. It's like, oh, no, Newt's dead. No, we just see it. It's like, here, Newt's fucking dead. Here's the rest of the movie. You know what I mean? Uh, Neanderthal says, a couple years ago, I was in a life crisis, and for two days I was on the edge... I was hearing most of your videos, especially most, especially those comic read aloud. Those comics read aloud. Your voice has healing properties. Well, I don't know what to say to that except thank you, and I hope you're doing well now. Teletronos ATS says hi, Alien Theory. We love you, man. Well, I love you too. Thank you. 
Stomachal says, do you think Raised by Wolves is connected to Alien? I still haven't finished Raised by Wolves. I think I only got maybe halfway through the first season, but I'm going to say no. Uh, some blue guy 41 says, have you read any of the Marvel Aliens comics? Yeah, I have, and I've been keeping up with it. Um, I was actually ranting on earlier in, in, in this chat about how Marvel's digital service is just complete bullshit, um, and they've made it mandatory to uh, create a Marvel Unlimited account and transfer over your Marvel app purchases because they made it mandatory to buy the digital comics through the Marvel app or Comixology app in the first place, when you could easily have bought them somewhere else, like through iTunes, Google, whatever, Kindle even. Um, bunch of bullshit but no i mean they're 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 okay i mean i i won't say they're bad um i'm not fully caught up yet though uh but i i i'd say they're they're pretty good they're decent uh, pjc 2.0 says would you like to see alien isolation turn into a live action movie i know i would um it could be interesting i you know what maybe i would actually say it might be better as like a series, like a mini series almost. Like if, if, if they took elements from the game and they took elements from uh, the Keith DiCandido novelization, uh, that's definitely a full series there uh, from, you know, like Netflix or I mean, I guess Disney Plus would be the property or Hulu that gets it. Uh, that might be interesting to see. TMXT T says, why wasn't the ship's computer in Covenant able to differentiate between Walter and David and give some indication it wasn't Walter to other crew members when they initially board? That's a good question. I didn't really think about that. Apparently neither did a writer. Uh, Robert Gaming 14 says, hey, Alien Theory, what is your favorite scene from Aliens 2? Ah, that's too hard to say. Oh, that's too hard to say. I, I plead the fifth for now on that. JB, just finished drowning my sorrows about the new... SW films by listening to Cold Forge and into Charybdis. Just wonder, wondering if you reckon Alex borrowed from some stuff from Gibson's Alien 3. I do for sure. Oh, oh, definitely because, I mean, uh, the whole uh, uh, UPP, uh, that's strictly from from Gibson's work, right? I mean, and, and that's kind of emerged lately uh, through the extended universe. And, and I think Alex White kind of took the opportunity to more firmly establish it i don't think anyone else had um if i'm not mistaken uh so you know uh, that's that's completely their uh decision uh contribution uh by kind of fusing what was uh you know an element of, of gibson script and and just putting it into present day and then of course you see it uh in the alien rpg um and in in the continuing stories, not the Alex White novels, but you know we've seen uh, the the other novels mention the UPP and have involvement. There's a, there's a bigger universe now uh, than than there was even just say ten years ago. Uh, and the other girl says, I don't know if you're playing the table or if you're. If you are playing tabletop role-playing games, the new Alien RPG by Free League is rather great. It includes rules for playing as a space trucker or a new Marine crew campaign. I just never really got into it. I want to. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm i so um, stubborn on just getting started. M. Gabriel says, you down with UPP? Yeah, you know me. Dirty Harry Callahan says, Corporal Hicks, look, he's just a grunt. He can't make that kind of decision. I'm sorry. No offense. Well, uh, we're, we're just kind of approaching two hours uh, to the stream now. Uh, I think it may be time to say thank you to Rose Skyth <laughs> for $10 uh, Super Chat. Thank you very much, Rose Skyth. Uh, big fan of your channel. Have you ever read or thought about reviewing Top Cow slash Dark Horse comic crossover Overkill 
starring Darkness, Witchblade, Aliens, Predator, back from 1999. No, I've never even heard of that. I'm not sure. Overkill. That actually doesn't ring a bell. But no, but I'll, I, I will look into it. But uh, thank you very much for, for your super chat. And thank you, everyone, uh, for, for, for coming to the chat here on Alien Day. Uh, but I do think uh, I will be closing it off for for today. Um, hopefully the buffering wasn't too bad. Hopefully not too much glitching. Uh, I appreciate you all coming out. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate you sticking with the channel. Uh, I appreciate all of your uh, kind words uh, throughout you know the, the hiatus um, during this time. Um, I hope to see more of you. I hope to, to bring more to the channel. And thank you. Uh, stay frosty. And until next time, this is Alien Theory signing off.